I'm going to be showing you graph features. Now these are things that are going to work for any kind of different graphs. They could be trigonometric, quadratic, polynomials, powers, exponentials, whatever. So these are the main uh, features we're going to be dealing with. So this is actually quite important. Uh, I'm just going to give you an overview because we're going to see lots of examples in practice in later videos. But for right now, I think it's important to know about the intercept. Now, to intercept means like where it crosses. So the y-intercept would be where it crosses the y-axis. The key thing here then is to remember that when you cross the y-axis, think about what x value you're at. In order to cross the x, uh, the y-axis here, x must be zero. So that's the key here. If you set x equal to zero in order to find the y-intercepts. So this could be some function like, uh, I don't know, let's make it like, uh, oops, make it look like maybe like e to the x, something goes sort of like this. What is it here? It'll be one, for example, this could be e to the x. Well, if I make uh, the x value zero, e to the zero just gives you one. So that's why it crosses here at one. So for example, the y-intercept here in this case would be y equals one in that particular case there. Um, well, similarly, the x-intercepts, that's just where it crosses the x-axis. So that's how many times or where does it cross here. So it could be something that, you know, goes like, I don't know, maybe some weird function like this. Then you can say, ah, well, it crosses it here and here and here and here. So what do you set? Do you notice you set y equal to 0? That is the key here for all of these things here. Okay, so in this particular example here, um, I don't know, maybe this is uh, minus 4, maybe this is plus 4, maybe this is 1, maybe this is minus 1. Then I could say, ah, okay, then the x-intercepts are x equals minus 4, x equals 4, I could say x equals minus 1, and x equals 1, so on. Now these are also known as roots, sometimes they're called zeros, sometimes they're called solutions. Just so you know, the y-intercepts are usually quite easy to find. Just set x equals to 0, and if you have a recipe for your equation, that's easy. The x-intercepts become a lot more complicated depending on how you're solving. So we're going to spend some time in some other videos showing you how to find the roots or zeros or solutions, especially of quadratics. But the, the idea is just where does it cross the x-axis? That's really the key thing. So the, the idea here is set y equal to 0 for the x-intercept, set x equal to 0 for the y-intercept. So let's look at an example. We can find the x-intercepts of the following polynomial. So let's actually take a look at what this graph looks like. I mean, there's two ways to do it. We can do it with a graph directly, or we can do it, so well, maybe I'll say that, I'll say using a graph, I'll say or we could also do it analytically, sort of mathematically. I just want to show you how we could do it mathematically, just in case you needed to. It all depends on what you like doing, but there's two ways to solve this. Let me show you the one way. Mathematically, if I want to find the x-intercepts, remember what that means? That means set y equal to 0. That's what it means. Right? I have to set y equal to 0. This is like the y value here. So I'm going to say 0 equals 2x cubed minus 5x. Does that make sense? That's where it crosses the x-axis. So that's where the y value is 0. All right. Well, this might look complicated, but I can actually take out a factor of x. So they both have an x in them, both of these terms. So I'll take out an x here. What's remaining is 2x squared minus 5. Because if I multiply back out, it gives me the same thing. Well, I'm going to use what's called the zero factor theorem, which is that either this equals 0 or set this equal to 0. That's the idea because 0 times anything gives me 0 or 0 times anything gives me 0. So one of the solutions then right away, can you see, it's just x equals 0. That's really simple because that's the first one here. The second one, however, is not quite so simple. So I'll just do it off to the side. x squared minus 5 equals 0. I move my minus 5 to the right, so I get 2x squared equals 5. I divide both sides by 2 to get rid of the 2 here, so I get x squared equals 5 over 2, and I do the square root. So I could say that ah, x equals, don't forget, it's always a plus minus square root of 5 over 2. It's plus or minus because a plus or a negative squared will give you that. So these are here will be my three solutions. There's technically three of them, right? There's x equals 0, there's x equals plus root 5 over 2, and there's minus root 5 over 2. We've done it mathematically. Let's actually try to do this graphically instead. So those are my three solutions there. Let's see if we can do it with a graph. So I guess I need a calculator first. And I'll do a new graph here. I'll do a graph. There we go. 
So I'm going to try to actually do this graph. So 2x to the power of 3 minus 5x. Now, depending on what calculator you use, though, but just, whoops, whoa, 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 something's wrong here. I have to go to the right here. I say minus 5x. There we go. I press enter, and there's my graph. Now, what I can do, I'll show you this later on with, um, I've got some other videos coming up with sketching versus graphing, but I'm just going to sketch this graph. So you see it crosses and it goes here and here. So I'm just going to sketch that. So I'm going to sketch it so it looks something like, it doesn't have to be perfect, right? You just go something like, you know, like this, and like this, and like this. And there were three places where it crossed the x axis. You see there's one here, one here, and one here. This one does look like x equals 0, so that's fine. That's one of them. Hey, that matches. What about this one? I hope it's plus root 5 over 2. How do we find it on our calculator? Um, depending on the calculator you use, if you're on the TI-84 along the top, you use Calc. If you're on the TI-Inspire, you use Menu, for example, and you do Analyze Graph, and you can say zeros. Now it's going to ask me, to, you know, where's the lower bound? Let's say I want this one here. So I'm going to go a little bit below it, a little bit above it, and it says minus 1.58. That turns out, if I do the other one as well, let's just make sure it works here. Look at that one, it's also 1.58, and that one's 0. So to see it's minus 1.58, 1.58. So let's see, let's do that. So I'll put that down. So x equals approximately 1.58, that's to three significant figures. It also equals approximately negative 1.58. So there would be my three solutions. And boy, I really hope that 1.58 is a square root of 5 over 2. Let's check if that's the case. I hope so. I think so. Uh, let's see. I need a square root. Whoa, that's not a square root. Where's my square root button? There it is. I need a pretty fraction here. So I'll do that. And I'll say 5 over 2. Yay! So I know I've done it right. So to see if we could do it graph or mathematically, either way we get the same answer. Maximum and minimum, thats we often call them local or absolute. Absolute means overall, local means like just in a little area. So I'll show you something that has some local maxes and mins. Maybe something like, something like this right here, for example. This right here is the local max. It's a place where it reaches a maximum value, but only in its little neighborhood here, because the absolute mag, uh, ma maximum sorry, might be somewhere way higher. Maybe this thing turns around or something. So I'll just call it a local max. This here it could be called a local min. Min for minimum, right? I'll be okay with that. I'm just using a short form. So local max, local min. Uh, some functions, the local max is the absolute. So let's say something like, uh, I don't know, maybe something like a quadratic some sort of parabola like this. This thing right here has a local max maybe right here. Well, it's also the absolute maximum as well. So you could call it the local max. You could call it the absolute max because it never gets higher than this. But if it's a quadratic, you can call this the vertex. Okay, That's also the same thing. That's a vertex. So just so you can see some of the terms we're going to be using. Symmetry is when something is the same on one side as the other. Imagine like some sort of reflection line. Like a, I imagine a mirror. And on both sides of the mirror, it's the same. And a really typical example is some sort of, you know, quadratic, something like that. Uh, whoops, I actually didn't draw it very nice. Let's say I draw it like something like this. Then you see there's like a mirror line right here. I would usually draw it as a dotted line, but this here is your symmetry line here, okay? And in fact, you could sit there and calculate. I mean, I'm going to use some quadratics, but there's lots of other functions that have symmetry. But just to show you, these are the main ones here. So I pretend this is it. So this right here would be called the axis of symmetry is actually the name for it. So let, let's say this thing right here, let's say it was over at uh, x equals 2. Then I would say the axis of symmetry in this case then. Let's say the axis of symmetry in this particular example. Okay, it's what is the equation of that line, of that dotted line here, where it's the same to the left as it is to the right. Uh, axis of symmetry, I could say it would be x equals 2 in this particular example here. So just to show you what we mean by symmetry. Finally, there's asymptotes. That's where the function is undefined. By the way, this one actually made me LOL. I actually laughed out loud when I first saw this one. I wish I made this one up, but I didn't. This is awesome. Asymptotic high fives, the fun never ends. <laughs> you know, that's... Yes.
<laughs> so we're going to use uh, horizontal asymptotes. I like to use a short form HA for horizontal asymptote. Okay, so I'll just call them HA. Vertical asymptote will be VA, just so we can have a short form here. So VA, HA. So uh, something with a horizontal asymptote, um, that is something that never quite reaches it never quite reaches something. So a horizontal asymptote, maybe I have something like that. We often draw it as a dotted line. Uh, I'm trying to make it a straight line. I'm just bad at drawing. But let's say something that goes like this. Or even, you know what, I'll make it something that goes like this. Even like here, or it goes kind of down like this. It's asymptote. It never quite reaches that line, but it comes really, really close. That could be my horizontal asymptote. Vertical asymptote will be something like... Uh, Maybe something like this right here. Actually, I'll do something that has a horizontal and a vertical one like this. Maybe some graph like uh, like that, maybe. You know, it has some values that it... So this is the vertical asymptote here. This here would be the horizontal asymptote. Now, how do we actually do them? You can just do them by looking at the graph. Okay, so if you're allowed a calculator, what you do is you look at this, uh, you do the graph of the equation, and you take a look. And usually you can kind of you can see it quite well. Your eyes are very well tuned to this. So most people they find it okay to see. Um, I want to show you how to do it mathematically as well. So the horizontal asymptote is, I mean, you can see it graphically. Actually, I don't have to write that down, I guess. But I'll say this: you set x equals infinity. Technically, you could also set x equals to minus infinity. It depends on if you approach it from the left or the right side. That's more interesting if you're doing higher level math. Um, also, I mean, it becomes really important with yeah, which side you approach things from becomes very important. But for right now, just for this video here, let's just keep it nice and simple. Set x equals infinity or x equals minus infinity, for example, and that'll get you something to do with the asymptote. How do we do this one right here? I would say this one here, set the denominator. Here's a trick here, okay? Set the denominator equal to zero. That's because you can't divide by zero. So let's say it was a graph of like one over x. Let's just say that was the graph of one over x. If I set the bottom here equal to zero, do you notice that would just be x equals zero? That would make it blow up. That makes it undefined. That's because you can't divide by zero. Try it on your calculator. It doesn't just say zero. It says error, undefined, or usually something like that, right? Because it's it's infinity. So that's just why you can't divide by zero. So that's how you, you sort of think about how you break it. So you break this equation. Whenever you see something with um, some x's on the bottom, as long as you can't cancel them all out, set the denominator equal to zero, and that's your vertical asymptote. So vertical asymptotes are actually, I think they're quite easy to find. Horizontal ones are sneakier. It all depends. So let's do a practical example here. This will be the example I'll show you. So for the following function, this will be this thing here. Find the equation of the vertical asymptote, the VA. We'll find that one. And we'll find the horizontal asymptote. I'm going to try to do it. First, I'll try to show you without a calculator. Then I'll show you with a calculator. It all depends on how you're trained for this. So let me show you how to do it without a calculator first. So the vertical asymptote, what do we do? We set the denominator equal to zero. Well, in this case, what's the denominator? The denominator is x minus one. So I'm going to say x minus one is going to equal to zero. I have to set my bottom, so to speak, this denominator. I'm going to set that equal to zero. Well, by doing that, then I just move my one around, so I have x equals one. That should be my vertical asymptote. That should be a place where it's undefined. Which means if I'm doing this graph right here, let me do it like this. Uh, maybe I'll put some little labels here. I'll label this as x equals 1, x equals 2, and so on. Well, I've just found that my vertical asymptote is x equals 1, which means this is a place where it never reaches. All right, let's do the horizontal asymptote. Now, remember what I do here? I have to set, I have to look at like what happens when I get to infinity, when I get really, really far to the right or really far to the left. So I'm going to set x equals infinity. Now you can actually mathematically do this. So let's just look at this. So let's do f of infinity. Maybe I'll do it in a different color. So I'll do it in maybe green. So I'll say, all right, so f of infinity, what does that give me? It looks like an 8 sign that's just fallen over, right? It's called a lemnus gate. But So f of infinity, what happens? Well, I do 1 over infinity minus 1, all that minus 1. Now, this might blow your brains out. I mean, this might be just totally crazy here. But there is a way to actually do this. 
Uh, HL students would do this a lot more. In SL, we don't have to worry about it too much. But I just want to share a cool trick. Infinity, which is the biggest number ever, if I subtract 1 from it, I'm still at infinity. So technically, this is kind of weird. But we basically ignore the minus 1 or a plus 1 or whatever here. We kind of ignore that. It just becomes 1 over infinity minus 1. Now, what happens when you divide by a really big number? Do you know it gets smaller and smaller and smaller? In fact, this thing right here approaches 0. Like if, if you ever try to like do 1 over 5, and you'll see you'll get a decimal, right? You'll get 0 0.2. Do 1 over 5,000, you'll get smaller. Do 1 over 5 billion, you'll get even smaller. Well, if you divide by the biggest number ever, you get the smallest number ever, which is 0. So this just approaches 0. If this is 0 minus 1, what do you get then? f of infinity then is just equal to minus 1. So therefore, you have your horizontal asymptote. Your horizontal asymptote is y equals minus 1. Isn't that kind of cheap? So that means I know for sure now that on this graph, I'm just trying to show you how to do it without a graphing calculator. In a second now, I'll show you how to do it with the calculator. So I just did it mathematically. Uh, there we go. I found my horizontal asymptote. Um, so now I know that's where my function kind of sits. So what I can do now is, is take a look at, uh, well, what the graph will look like. The graph will do something like, I'm just going to do a sketch now, but something like, something like this and something like this. There we go. But I've actually solved it. Let's do it on the calculator instead just to see if that's simpler. So I'll do a new page here. I'll add a calculator, uh, graph. I'll do this graph here. I'll do pretty fraction here and I'll do one. Oh, whoops. You know, on the TI-84, you can also do nice fractions. It's a little green button. You go to F1, and you go N over D. It's like numerator over denominator. So actually, that's a little pro tip for you there. Uh, so I go like this, minus 1. There we go. Boom. Doesn't it look just like this? And you can see, hey, where does it look like it's undefined? Where is there a problem? Do you notice the problem looks like it's right about here? So you see, you can kind of see it's at 1. You're like, oh, okay, good. So the vertical asymptote is at x equals 1. Hey, look. Then you can say, hey, what does it look like at infinity? Or like as you go really, really far to the left, doesn't it look like it approaches some value here? Doesn't it look like it approaches some value? Well, that looks like it's minus 1. And then boom, you got it. You could actually figure it out by just giving bigger and bigger values. You can do like a graph trace or do value. And you could say like, I want x to be 5. Okay, do you notice it's minus 0.75? I want it to be 50 then. Let's just see what happens then. Oh, it's minus 0.98. Get me 500, let's just say. So get me like a really big value. Get me 5,000. Do you notice what I'm doing? I'm just trying to ask my calculator. Oh, look, it's minus 1. See, that's how I knew it. So I hope that helps. There's a lot of features to graphs, but we can do them. You just got to remember what each of them means, and away we go. We can do this.